In this lesson, we're going to be talking about vulnerability scanning. Vulnerability scanning is, as the name would suggest, an attempt to find vulnerabilities on target systems. So we scan or we send a lot of messages out to these target systems to figure out what sorts of vulnerabilities they have. There are a number of vulnerability scanners on the market. Vulnerability scanning goes back to the mid-90s or so with a project called Satan, which ran on Unix systems. Since then, there have been a fairly large number of vulnerability scanners that are available. I'll show you a couple here just to give you a sense of what's available. In subsequent lessons, we'll focus primarily on using Nessus, which you see here. What vulnerability scanners do is they probe for open ports. They do some banner grabs, try to figure out what versions are running. They also check operating systems. They'll check to see what services are available and again, what version number that those services are running. So here's a login for Nessus. It's by Tenable Network Security. Nessus has long been a pretty well-respected vulnerability scanner. They do have a home feed that's available. It's free to use on your home network. The downside to the home feed is it's several days out of date from the professional feed. The professional feed is still a pretty reasonable price, though, compared with some of the more commercial offerings. There is another vulnerability scanner on the market that is available for free. That's the Nexpose community version. And you can use this to scan up to 32 IP addresses. It means you can scan 32 IP addresses. It will maintain 32 IP addresses in its database. If you want to scan more than that, you've got to delete the hosts, which can be a bit of a pain. Although, if you're on a budget, you can certainly make use of this Nexpose Community Edition. Again, you can use this for commercial use up to 32 IP addresses, where Nessus offers you a free feed, but you can't use it for commercial purposes. So there's some slight differences there. One of the popular commercial offerings is Qualys Guard from the company Qualys. They do a lot of different things in terms of vulnerabilities and checking for malware, and it's a pretty comprehensive suite that they've got available. One of the downsides to vulnerability scanning, though, is you can't guarantee that a vulnerability actually exists based on a vulnerability scanner because, again, it's going on version numbers where it can find them and banners and all of those sorts of things you can either hide or you can spoof them or do various other things to protect against these vulnerability scanners. So a vulnerability scanner can generate both false positives and false negatives. Just because a vulnerability scanner gets a result that suggests that you don't really have any vulnerabilities or many vulnerabilities doesn't necessarily mean that you do or you don't have a significant number of vulnerabilities because the vulnerability scanner is making its best guess based on the information that it has. The vulnerability scanner does not go out and attempt to exploit these vulnerabilities to make sure that they really exist. That would be kind of bad behavior. So it does take a skilled user or a knowledgeable user to go through the results from these vulnerability scanners in order to determine whether the vulnerabilities exist or not and whether the criticality types of severity or criticality that the scanner uses in order to quantify the vulnerability, whether you agree with that particular severity or criticality. You may have some sort of remediation in place that protects these systems. An example is if I provide credentials to a vulnerability scanner, it can log into the system and check for local vulnerabilities. And one of the things that a vulnerability scanner may come back and say against the Linux system, for example, it may say, hey, I can figure out all of the packages on your system. Well, congratulations, you are already logged in. That's something that anybody who's logged in can do but you have to be logged in in order to be able to get that information. 
So they may rate that a high severity because you can get packages and versions. But again, you've got to be logged in. So if you've got a strong password policy and you check against that on a regular basis and you also do regular auditing of your users, that may be enough of a remediation or mitigation that you can say, hey, Nessus or Nexpose, you think that's a big deal, but I really don't. I think it's a low risk, even though you rate it higher. So again, it takes knowledgeable people to go through these reports and figure out whether the severities are really ones that you would agree with or not. So that's vulnerability scanners. Again, in subsequent lessons, we'll go through in more detail how to make use of these vulnerability scanners.